Assalamu alaikum everyone and a very good afternoon, evening to all. Thank you all for joining. Uh, my name is Mashlu Khan. I am an uh, Education USA advisor at the US Educational Foundation in Pakistan. And today we are here to um, learn a little bit more about the teacher education programs in, um, in the US. And we have uh, Clarkson University as an example today. So before we begin and get into the session and I hand it over to our uh, presenters, um, just a little bit about our organization, who we are and what we do. Next slide, please. So as you can see, uh, Education USA is a US State Department network. What do we do? We promote US higher education across the world. Uh, we have centers in more than 170 countries, and we have, we have more than 425 uh, student advising centers. Um, the advisors at these centers work to promote U.S. higher education to students who want to pursue their bachelor's, master's, or PhD degrees in the USA, and they offer uh, current and accurate uh, information about uh, U.S. universities and the pro programs that are offered over there. Uh, in Pakistan, we also have three centers in Islamabad, Lahore, and Karachi, and we are a group of advisors here who are facilitating Pakistani students um, who are interested in, interested in applying to uh, bachelor's, master's, or PhD programs. Next slide, please. Uh, now, the Education USA Advising Centers are hosted by U.S. Educational Foundation. Uh, in Pakistan. Uh, we are housed in USEFP, uh, which is uh, also known as, known as the Fulbright Commission. And uh, you must all, uh, you must know about the famous, uh, very competitive Fulbright degree program uh, that supports uh, students who want to either go for a master's uh, or a PhD in the United States. You can find out more information about our fully funded programs on the USEFP website. It's usefp.org. Uh, we also have a prometric testing center at USEFP. Uh, you can take uh, international standardized exams over here, certain other certifications over here. The exams that are conducted, some of the examples are GRE, TOEFL, SAT, that are required for international admissions, whether you're going for a bachelor's or a master's. <laughs> Uh, so both for undergraduate and graduate levels. So this is a little brief in, in introduction about Education USA and USEFP. You can also visit the educationusa.pk website to um, learn more about our services and register for our free advising services if you would like to uh, speak to an advisor and um, you know, share or discuss your pros prospects of uh, studying in the USA. So uh, moving on. Next slide, please. I would like to hand it over to now uh, uh, Catherine Snyder and Rana Al Saidi, uh, who are going to give you more information, who are first going to introduce themselves and then get, going to give you more information about the teacher education programs. Uh, thank you so much, Catherine and Rana, for joining us today. And over to you. Thank you, Michelle. So hello everyone, my name is Rana. I'm the Assistant Director of International Graduate Admissions at Clarkson University. I worked in different higher education um, institutions before I landed in, in Clarkson University. I'm also joined today by Dr. Catherine Snyder. She is the chair of our education program here at Clarkson University. Dr. Snyder has um, um, degrees in economics and then a master's degree in business administration and teaching. Our, our arts and teaching and also a PhD degree in curriculum and instruction. Uh, Dr. Snyder has been with Clarkson for more than 11 years now, and um, she is a board certified uh, teacher and also place that placing her among the 1% of New York State um, teaching force with this elite designation. Um, today, she's going to give you a general introduction about the teaching education programs in the United States, and she will um, use our education program at Clarkson University as an example. So we will cover topics um, about the certification, non-certification, and then introduce to you our education programs and the degrees we offer. Uh, Dr. Schneider, Snyder. Thank you, Rana. 
Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. It's my pleasure to share information about US education systems for teachers and to talk uh, about Clarkson University as, as an example. So uh, we can skip over that introduction slide there. Uh, so let me just start by sharing with you where Clarkson University is. We have a few different campuses. Uh, the main campus is in Potsdam, New York, which is in Northern New York, uh, in fact, quite close to the Canadian border. And that's where our undergraduate student population is. And we do have some PhD programs there. The teacher education program at Clarkson is actually located in Schenectady, New York which is almost right in the middle of the state in what we call New York's capital region. We're right near Albany, which is the capital of New York state. And it's a, it's a small urban area um, that encompasses three cities and, uh, and it's, it's a great place to live. Uh, we also have campuses closer to New York City in Beacon and a, a research institute in the Adirondacks of New York state at the Trudeau Institute. And of course we offer programs in person, online, and hybrid. So I'd like to start by introducing you to some general information about uh, US teaching programs. And please feel free to put questions in the chat, ask questions. I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions that I, that I can. Um, so let's start with, uh, with the basics, the structure of schools of education and teaching programs in the US. There are different ways to become a teacher, to prepare to become a teacher in the US. You can go through an undergraduate teacher preparation program where you would study, for example, if you were interested in becoming a chemistry teacher, you would study chemistry and education as an undergraduate and graduate in New York State with your New York State, what we call initial certification that makes you hireable. So a school in New York could hire you with that bachelor's degree. However, you are required to have a master's degree to teach in New York State. So, um, so you would have a certain number of years to complete that master's degree or you, would, or you would lose your job. So what most people tend to do is go straight through their bachelor's and their master's before getting a degree. And you're much more competitive when you go into a job interview with your master's degree already. Uh, other states are different than New York. Uh, we are, I like to say that we are a country with 50 systems of education, one for each state. So depending on where you decide to go in the United States, you really have to look at the Department of Education website for that state to determine what's required. Some states don't require master's degrees, some do. Some states will take certifications from other states and some won't. So you, depending on where you want to go and where you want to stay perhaps long-term, you really do have to look at the particular state ed website to see what the requirements are. Now, the, the good news is that New York State and California are considered the strongest states when it comes to getting your teacher certification. So if you get your teaching degree in either California or New York, you can likely go to any other state in the country and get a job. So if you think you might be coming to the US to study teacher education, and but you're not sure where you want to end up, you know, whether you want to be in, in New York or Oklahoma or Colorado or California, focusing your search for universities on either New York or California is a smart thing to do because that will give you more flexibility in your career long term. Um, they are states that also require master's degrees uh, to teach. Uh, so there are different, there are different kinds of master's degrees. So as I mentioned, you can get your certification as an undergrad, but what is considered more valued in the field is if you get your undergraduate degree in the discipline you wish to teach. So for example, chemistry or French or English. If you have a degree in English literature and as an undergraduate and then go for your master's degree in teaching, you're going to be much more competitive in the field. And there are a few different kinds of master's degrees you can get. And again, this depends on the state you're going to. And so you want to be careful. What you want to look for if you're thinking of coming to the US for a master's degree in order to teach 
you want to make sure that the master's degree you're getting leads to certification in that state. Because there are um, what I might call generic master's degrees. So a master's degree in education is a very informative degree. It teaches you more about education. It might be a degree that you take on your way to a PhD program, but a master's in education doesn't provide you with certification. And if your goal is to become a teacher, then you want to have a master's degree that provides you with certification. So that's more like the degree that we offer here at Clarkson, the Master of Arts in Teaching. If, it, if it, the degree is called a Master of Arts in Teaching or an MAT degree, that very likely has certification. Um, another common title for a degree that has certification is an MSED, a Master of Science in Education. A Master of Science in Education will often lead to certification, but you really have to check because if that's your goal, you wanna make sure you're going into a degree program that combines the graduate degree with certification. Uh, and then you want to look at the mode of teaching, not just the mode of teaching for the degree program, but how are they teaching you how to teach? So first, is the degree program online or hybrid or in-person? And if you're coming to the US to study as an international student, you need to have an in-person program to meet your visa requirements. So you have to make sure that the courses are offering are in-person. You're allowed to take a couple of online courses as international students, um, but you really need an in-person program. And then the other question to ask is, what type of teaching are they, ask, are they teaching you? So are they teaching you to be an online teacher or are they teaching you to be an in-person teacher? Because schools want you to be an in-person teacher. So you have to make sure that you're registering for the right program. And then the last thing you wanna look for is accreditation. Is the university that you're going to accredited? So the university will have accreditation through the United States, the federal department of education, um, but then the actual school of education or department of education that is the home to the master's degree should also have an accreditation. There are two national accreditors in the United States for teacher education programs. And the school that you're looking at should have accreditation from at least one of those. Um, well, from one of those, you can only have it from one or the other. Um, and I'll put, I'll put the, uh, the, just the acronyms, CAEP is one of the accreditors and uh, AQIP is the other accreditor. You want to see one of those two accreditation um, bodies on the school or department of education that you're going to that's hosting the degree program. And that will tell you that 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 program, that degree has been approved by a national association that is supported by the federal government. So that's a, a sign of quality that you want to look for. Okay. So let's shift now and specifically talk about Clarkson University as an example. I'll talk about the programs that we have We'll talk about admissions and costs and coursework. And again, if you have questions as we go along, feel free to put them in the chat. So Clarkson offers a Master of Arts in Teaching. It's an MAT degree. Uh, and we focus on a couple of different areas. Mainly we focus on secondary education. So in the United States, that's grades seven through 12. So students who are about 13 years old up to 18 years old is who people will be teaching with a degree in secondary education. Uh, we also do offer what's called a TESOL degree, teaching English to speakers of other languages. That degree program qualifies teachers to teach children from, from kindergarten through 12th grade, so the whole range. But all of these other degrees are what we call secondary, so middle and high school degrees. And these are all the areas that we certify in. So all of the sciences, as well as math, technology, and computer science, business and marketing, social studies and English, and then we certify in seven different languages. So if you're interested in becoming a middle or a high school teacher, these degree programs will offer you that pathway into that career field. 
So what's different about Clarkson? So at Clarkson, we offer a lot of support to our students. We operate on what we call a cohort model. So our students um, come into the program together and get to know each other really well and move through the program together. And we know from, from research on professional master's programs that a cohort model really increases students' likelihood of success and graduation because of the support that it creates. So we do this very intentionally. We have activities and, and sessions and support for our students to develop that cohort model. All of our courses are designed and taught by people who have experience teaching in secondary schools. So they either are full-time secondary teachers or there are people like me who I taught uh, high school social studies for 10 years um, and then got my PhD and became a professor and I'm now in, at Clarkson. So everyone who you encounter at Clarkson in the Master of Arts in Teaching program has significant experience teaching high school um, or middle school. So they know what it's like to manage 130 students, to manage the pressures of the state exams, to, to manage everything that teachers need to do. Um, everyone has done what you are attempting to do with your degree. So they're very experienced. Um, our lessons are designed to help students, uh, to help our students teach their students in what we call student-centered ways. So, our graduates don't go into the high school and lecture. They go into the high school and teach in ways that allow the children to discover their learning. So we call this student-centered student teaching methods. And it's an expectation of New York State schools that teachers teach in this manner so that the ownership of learning is handed over to the children and the teacher is there to design those lessons, to design ways for the students to think critically and learn. We are of course aligned with New York State and national standards. So our program is fully accredited by the Federal Department of Education, by the New York State Department of Education, and of course by AQIP, one of the accreditors that I mentioned before. Um, in fact, uh, we were the first program in New York State to be accredited by AQIP, and we're very, very proud of that designation. Another piece of information that sets our program apart, and this is quite unique, is that our students complete a full year teaching residency. Many other programs have you teach for eight weeks or 12 weeks before you receive your certification. Our program asks you to teach for a full year. And that really sets us apart because it means that when you graduate, you've had a full year of teaching experience already. So the school districts that will hire you look at that experience and value that experience. It also means that you have a whole year where you're working side by side. If we keep using chemistry as an example. So you would have a residency in a chemistry classroom with a chemistry teacher in a local school and you'd work side by side with that chemistry teacher for a whole year, teaching a couple of that person's classes, but observing the other classes and working together to write lesson plans and really learn what it's like to start the school year in September and to move students all the way through the year, all the way to final exams and state exams. So it gives you that full breadth of experience. Um, there are only a handful of programs in New York that do this, about four or five, and there are only about 60 programs nationally that have a full year teaching residency, and they're considered um, very highly valued, and when I share some of our statistics, you'll, you'll see that. And then finally, all of our students are supported by three important people their advisor, who's the person in their content area. So this is a full-time faculty member uh, who has teaching experience in that discipline and who is, the, is a faculty member in the Clarkson Department of Education. And then they have their supervisor and their supervisor is a retired teacher in the discipline that they're studying. So again, let's say it's a science, a retired science teacher. And that person is on the faculty of Clarkson and they visit you uh, twice a month during your residency to see you teach, to observe, to give you advice, to share resources. And then finally, you have your mentor teacher. 
And that's the public school teacher who you're working with, whose classes you're teaching in, who's with you every day during the residency. Okay. So let me make sure, yep, we're here. Rana, would you like to talk about this slide or would you like me to keep going? Sorry, I can talk about it. Thanks. Thank you. So um, as Catherine said that um, our program is designed in a way that serves every student, um, not only domestic students, but international students. Uh, the number of credits varies from one program into another, but mainly the number of the credits to the Master of Arts in Teaching is 24 to 30 credits. We usually recommend to international students to choose the two years program to complete that. Um, and for many reasons, the first reason is they have to be in the United States to take some in-person classes and do their residency. And that's why we just recommend that they do not rush the process and take their time and finish in two years. Um, the practicum, again, it's different, so you will have uh, virtual observations, you will have um, teacher interview, and then now you are going to have a uh, in-person teaching experience. One semester of undergraduate language study, that's um, very important. Some students, they um, come to the United States with another language, equipped with another language, but um, we require that students take at least one language um, course requirement, and this is going to be an undergraduate study. And mainly, this is what we see most of the international students are already taking that. The GPA, typically, we accept 3.0 or higher than that. Um, can we move to the next slide, please, Catherine? Mm -hmm. Thank you. So Clarkson prepares you for your teaching career even before graduation. So while you're a student with us, we're working on helping you to, to find that job. And we do that with several different um, activities during the year. We have one-on-one -on -one career consultation. We have a full-time career services person right in our building who works with the MAT students. Um, he holds resume workshops, makes sure your, your resume looks the way schools expect it to. Um, we send you to conferences and networking events around the Capital District where schools come together to meet prospective teachers, people they want to hire. We help our students to create an electronic portfolio and help them with their cover letters for their resumes. Of course, the faculty write recommendations and, and provide references for you. And then we make sure you're aware of career fairs that are in the area that you can attend to meet different schools. And we bring in alumni panels a few times a year so that you can talk with alumni about their experience. How did they get a job? What were the things that they did? What mistakes did they make? You know, What advice do they have for you? And then finally, we teach you um, how to prepare for the job search through mock interviews and what we call elevator speeches. Um, mock interviews, we have a day where we invite administrators from across New York State to come and do practice interviews with our students and give them feedback. And this is a really important day because it provides our students with a very realistic interview experience, um, but it also allows those administrators to meet you. And it's not uncommon after mock interview day for a school to follow up with a student and say, hey, would you like to come in for a formal interview? We expect that we might have an opening in Spanish or um, in English or in history. Can you come and come and meet with us? And then also we have you practice elevator speeches. And that's a phrase we use for a one minute speech. So let's say you're at a conference or you're in a situation where you have an opportunity to speak to a school principal or a department chair at a school that you really want to teach in. If you have your elevator speech ready, you're prepared to talk to that person and pitch yourself, you know, give them what are the two or three points you want them to know and remember about you so that if a job opening comes up, they'll reach out and contact you. So we practice all of that. And then of course, we're very proud of the fact that we have 100% job placement. And uh, the cohort that just graduated in June of 2020, so they started, um, they started teaching this week, uh, they are also fully employed. So we're very proud of that and, and the work that our students do and the hard work that our faculty does. 
So one of the really nice things about a career in teaching in New York State is that you have some work-life balance. Um, teachers have regular hours, they're reasonable hours. You do start early in the morning. Um, schools usually are open at about 7.30 in the morning and teachers start teaching by eight. But you're also done by 3.30 or four o'clock in the afternoon. So you have very reasonable working hours. You have guaranteed vacations. You have nine weeks of summer vacation, uh, which is really a luxury. And also teachers have really excellent healthcare benefits. They have sick, paid sick days, paid personal days, paid professional development days. And in New York state, teachers are unionized. So there's a contract with a union that supports teachers. So you know what your salary is from year to year, you know what your pension is going to be. Um, and that's something that's quite unusual in the United States now to, to have a career where you're offered a pension. And teachers in New York State right now, when they retire, a typical average salary for a New York State teacher right now at retirement, after they've taught for 30 years, is about $100,000. And so that person, if they were retiring today, would retire with a retirement salary of $60,000 um, for the rest of their lives. So it's, it's a very good system in New York State and it's well supported by the state. It's one of the reasons that, that people do want to come to New York to teach because of the retirement benefits. Okay. So here are some statistics on our program that I think hopefully will show you how competitive it is, how, um, how desirable it is. First of all, after five years of teaching, 93% of our alumni are still in the classroom. And that's a, that's a really strong statistic because nationally, about 50 to 80% of people who complete teacher education programs stay in teaching. So the fact that 93% of our students stay in the classroom after five years means that we're preparing them really well and that they really do want to be teachers. People come, our degree, our degree program is challenging. If you're coming to our degree program, it's because you want to be a teacher. Um, and many of our alumni after five years are moving into leadership positions as department chairs or principals or superintendents. Um, the second statistic is the pass rate on the required New York State certification exams. These exams are quite challenging and we prepare our students well for these exams. Our students pass the exams, 95% of our students pass the exams the first time they take them. Um, again, that's compared across the state with other teacher education programs to 50 to 85%. And this is again, because our students work very hard, but also our teachers ensure that the content on the exams is built into the coursework so that you're really prepared for those exams. And then we have 100% of our faculty have had K-12 teaching experience. Every single person you encounter in the program has K-12 teaching experience. So they know what it's like to be a teacher. They know what it is that you're training for. And then finally, as we mentioned before, we have 100% job placement since 2016. Uh, Rana, would you like to talk about the application process? Yes, thank you. Uh, so our application process is very straightforward and it is very easy. It's similar to many uh, application processes in many universities, but we have something unique here. Uh, when you start your application, you need to meet um, three requirements, and that's very important. The first one is you fill out the application form and it has to be completed and then you prepare all your materials and provide additional application materials if you have any of them. Um, you um, need to write a statement of purpose and the statement of purpose, um, you need to make sure that you um, explain your goals carefully to the committee and also let them know about your history, your experience and your future plans after you get the uh, degree. Um, you will be required to uh, have three recommendation letters, and we usually ask students to choose two of them uh, from faculty members, former faculty members, and one of them can be professional, especially for many of the students who come to the education program, they already have a uh, experience in teaching. 
English proficiency testing. We accept four English proficiency uh, tests. Um, we accept TOEFL, the IBT, and our minimum score is 80. And then recently we added TOEFL essentials and our minimum score is 8.5. IELTS, uh, we accept 6.5, PTE 56, and uh, for Duolingo, we accept 115. Um, your essay um, can vary between 250 words to 500, and um, your resume should explain, again, your experience, your uh, employment history, your goals, if you have any volunteer work and any, or anything, add that to it. And then after you finish that um, and submit your application, what is unique here is uh, before we send your application to the review, we can sit with you in the admissions and have inter um, just a meeting with you, review your application, see if there's anything you need to add, you need to take off, you need to modify your statement of purpose. Um, if you have something that you want to add and you are hesitant about it, and then after you complete everything, we will send your application to the uh, review. Um, in the education department, the faculty, they conduct interviews with students. So you will have the interview with a faculty member or the director of the program. And then from that, you are going to um, hear from us. Um, another unique thing about applications in uh, Clarkson University is we waive the application fee uh, to international students. And I will put a code in the chat. Everyone here can use it. Um, and you just add that code to your application and um, you submit that. GRE and GMAT are all waived um, for the uh, education programs here at Clarkson. And um, as we mentioned in the slide about the prerequisites, um, students should um, meet the requirements and uh, have 24 to 30 credits in certification. And also they ha should have their um, practicum, virtual teaching or observations. All these um, prerequisites can be discussed with you after, after you submit your application and meet with the admissions office. And then when you move to the interview, you can also hear some feedback. Even if you don't meet the requirements, the um, department will um, recommend for you what courses you need to take in order to meet the prerequisites. And uh, we have some students, they maybe they do not meet the prerequisite for the language course or for the 24 credits in history or social science. Also, the department will suggest uh, what courses you need to take. And then we, you go back to the international, uh, to the admissions international office, and then we can suggest to you how you can meet these prerequisites, can take these extra credits before you start joining the program. Thank you, Catherine. So um, we also have um, in Clarkson University, you can use our social media platforms to reach us. And we also have a chat with the graduate students. We have ambassador students who are already in the programs. And um, when you click on the um, link and the link is on the um, next slide, it will take you to students from your own country. And these students, they are already studying here. They have experience here. You could ask them different uh, questions about the programs, about their experience here with Clarkson, um, about um, the just life in general in the United States. Uh, they are very nice. They are really thorough. They know a lot of information about the program, life here in the United States, studying at Clarkson, and you could just communicate with them. And of course, if you need any professional experience, um, advice or anything else regarding your application, you can ask them and also ask us. So here you can scan um, these codes. They will take you to the application fee waiver, but I will also place it in the chat, the application form. You can uh, review the graduate um, prof and professional programs, and this will take you to our um, education um, programs here at Clarkson, graduate admissions to know more information about the requirements, and also the graduate school. And this will also give you information about um, the requirements. And also you can reach us uh, through the email that is here and I will directly respond to you so quickly. I respond so quickly. So even if you um, have any question, please feel free to um, send your question. You can also call us on these uh, phone numbers and we will answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Snyder and Rana. Uh, were you going to say something? Oh, no, I'm good. 
All right. So uh, we have a few questions in the chat that I've uh, uh, that I've gathered. Um, uh, everyone, please feel free to drop in your questions in the chat, or if you'd like to unmute yourself, you can do that and ask your question. Um, please feel uh, feel free to to do that. Um, Dr. Snyder and Vana are here to answer your questions. Okay, so the first question that we received was from Mohammed Bakas. He's asking, uh, is it possible to start teaching directly in a university instead of starting with the high school? Like Dr. Snyder herself, she is now teaching at Clarkson, but start, started with the high school. Um, so would, would you like to answer that? Sure, it is possible to start teaching directly in a university. To do that, you do need a PhD. Um, the, we do have a, what we call community college system in the United States. And a community college, a junior college is another way to, to, um, to label it. It's a, a college that students go to uh, before they go to a university. So for that level of teaching, um, sometimes you can teach with a master's degree. But for a four-year college or for a university, you need to have a PhD. But if you do, if you do get a PhD, you can go directly into university teaching. It is very competitive. It is a very competitive field. Thank you, Dr. Snyder. Um, the other question, as I mentioned to you, to you in the beginning, that we shared this uh, in the session with. Uh, um, with our counselors as well. And one of the counselors is asking that since they're, they are professionally a counselor and they're not subject specialist, uh, so what are the options for them? Can they pursue the MAT program? So it really depends on the undergraduate degree. Um, if their undergraduate degree is in counseling, then there isn't really a, um, a, a discipline that aligns with that. But if they, for example, studied counseling and English and have enough credits in English, they could apply for the Master of Arts in Teaching in, in English, uh, uh, you know, or any other, if they had what we call a double major and had another discipline that they studied along with counseling, that could be a possibility. All right, makes sense. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, the next question is, um, I have engineering discipline experience, but want to become a teacher. Do I need any further credits uh, or courses? I think it's a similar question. Yeah, yeah, it's um, that's a great question. It really depends on the type of engineering. We'd have to look at the transcript, but most likely with an engineering degree, um, you would qualify for becoming a, a technology teacher or a computer science teacher. So again, it depends on the type of engineering, but schools really, um, really do value engineering degrees because the technology, technology, computer science, and business are um, courses in high schools that are really expanding right now. So uh, please send us your transcript and we, we can take a look at it. Right. So Vakas, you can... Be in touch with Rana and uh, Dr. Snyder, and they can help you with it. Um, okay, so the next question is, uh, somebody's asking they have a master's degree in anthropology. And so mm -hmm. with that, can they apply for a teaching program? So anthropology would fall under social studies for us. And the primary discipline in social studies is history. So it depends on how much uh, history is also on the application. Uh, the person would need uh, in total 10 history courses. Two of those courses could be taken as part of the MAT program. So that means eight history courses. So again, similar to the answer with the technology question, we'd have to look at the transcript and see what additional coursework you might need to take. Or if you have enough history courses, then, then you wouldn't have to take additional um, courses. The advantage to having a degree like anthropology though, even if the answer is, well, you have to take a couple more courses, the advantage is then you would be offering the school, not just the traditional history degree to be a social studies teacher, but this other discipline. And many social studies departments in New York State schools, they teach history, but they also teach psychology and sociology and anthropology. So they'll have these elective courses for the students. So having a degree in anthropology with enough history 
uh, is a valuable is a valuable pathway to get to get a job in in New York. Thank you. Um, I think my colleague also had a question. Amara, would you like to unmute your microphone? Sure. Um, so, Dr. Snyder, I have a question. Um, I I want to know if the university um, offers. Um, uh, an online uh, certification degree or program, um, especially for people like us who have already done their masters and are here and want to uh, take advantage uh, of the certification. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and the second question would be, how long is that uh, certification program or degree? Okay, so um, we do have a degree that is called a Master of Arts in teaching English as a second language or foreign language. And that's a fully online degree designed for people who want to stay in their home country or to go abroad and, and teach English. It doesn't include New York State certification because in that case, you don't, you don't need it. Um, other than that, we don't have a program that you can take to get New York State certification while still living overseas. Some of our international students, though, do start taking the coursework before they arrive. Um, and this, this is a shift that we made during COVID because many of our international students couldn't come. So it is possible to start taking courses. Uh, some of our courses are offered online. So you could be admitted to the MAT program and spend one or two semesters still in Pakistan taking courses before you arrive in the US to, to finish the degree. Um, but if you're seeking New York State certification, you do have to come to New York. Your student teaching experience, what we call the residency, has to take place in New York. Um, and I should mention that, and Rana mentioned that we our program is set up very nicely, conveniently for international students. This year's graduating class, the group that will graduate in June of 2023, um, just about half of them are international. So we have a lot of international students coming to New York State and all of these great international students are helping us to fill our teacher shortage that we have in New York State right now. So we are very well prepared to support you and to help you get, um, <clears throat> get the degree and, and help you find a job. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Um, all right, there's somebody who uh, joined us very late um, and they're asking, can we start teaching directly in the USA? Um, I know this takes us back to the, the part where um, you mentioned about having certification, having to do certifications mm -hmm. and you have to be a certified teacher and what that process is. Can you, can you please repeat that for our mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. for yeah. audience member? So if you're interested in getting a job in a public school in New York State, you do need certification. So you can't start teaching right away. Um, you do need to go through a certification program. And I'll just summarize what we, what we started with. And that is that um, every state in the United States is different and they have different regulations about teacher certification. So depending on where you wanna go, you'll want to look at that state's um, website, the government website, and go to their Department of Education and find out what their requirements are. Uh, but they will, for public school teaching, you do need to be certified. The two states that have um, the highest, most rigorous certification pathways are New York and California. And if you want to get a teaching degree in the United States, I recommend going to one of those. Of course, I recommend coming to Clarkson, but I recommend going to New, to New York or California because most other states in the country will accept New York and California certification. Um, so if you get certified in New York or California, it gives you the most flexibility if you think you're going to be in a career or um, a life situation where you, where you want to move around a lot. Um, but you do, for public school, you need certification. If you're interested in teaching in independent schools in the United States, they might hire a person without certification, um, but typically they're looking for a master's degree uh, and teaching experience. But you could potentially get a job um, with an in independent school. And the independent school market in the United States, it varies 
significantly. So some independent schools pay very well and, and are what we would call an elite independent school where you're gonna make a good salary. And if it's a school that's a boarding school, you'll be provided with an apartment and, and things like that. Other independent schools that are more local smaller independent schools don't pay well. So you wanna, you wanna be careful about that. I'll put a organization in the chat that you can look at. Uh, thank you. Yeah, um, let me just let me just okay. explain this. Um, Carney Sando and Associates is the largest agency in the United States for placing people into independent schools. Um, we work with Carney Sando very closely. They're based in Boston, Massachusetts, and they come to Clarkson to our MAT program twice a year to meet our students and interview our students. And um, and our students do get jobs through Kearney Sandow and very good independent schools, but you don't need to go through a university. You can look at Kearney Sandow at their website and, and what would happen is you would apply to become a client and they would either accept you or not. Um, and there's no charge for that through Kearney Sandow. But they do, if you're coming directly from overseas, you'd want a master's degree, you'd want to have experience teaching um, in order for them to consider you. Okay, Thank now, you. sorry, Marshall. Yeah. No, that's fine. Uh, there are a few follow up questions. Mm -hmm. um, so, so somebody's asking uh, whether they'll be able to do these certifications online while in Pakistan. So you could start a certification online, but the requirement for New York State is that you complete your student teaching in New York State. So you'd only be able to start maybe take two or three courses overseas online before you had to relocate to New York State to complete the degree. Um, and, and most states are going to have that rule that you can't do, that you have to do your student teaching in the state where you're going to get certified. So at some point you have to go to that state to get the certification. Okay, makes sense, thank you. Uh, any other questions? Um... Please, if you feel free to unmute your microphone and ask the question, that's also convenient. Oh, yes. So there's another question about uh, the fee structure and uh, financial aid. Mm -hmm. Rana, do you want to answer that or would you like me to? I'll take it. Thank you. So um, at Clarkson, we charge per credit, and it depends on the program. For our education program, it varies between 990 90 to 1,000. And also, again, it depends on the program itself and the number of the credits. Um, we unfortunately do not offer full scholarships in most of our uh, master's degree programs, but we offer a merit scholarship in many of our education um, Clarkson's program, graduate programs, and this allows students to have about 30% discount, um, which is very good because they have to pay only 70% of the uh, full tuition. And again, um, it depends on how many credits in every program. And um, again, it depends on, the, that's for the credits, for the life expenses and everything. It depends on the student style of li living. Some students, they prefer to live with other students and share only a room in an apartment or in a house. Others, they would like to live independently. Um, so yeah, again, the expenses, they depend on your lifestyle already and how you decide that. All right, thank you. Um, I think the next question is about how long this admission process uh, is going to take and basically I think the person is trying to ask when the applications open for you um, and when the classes would start after they submit the application so timeline basically okay so I'll uh, Catherine I'll take the part for the process so uh, the process is actually very quick um, it depends on if you are ready or not all your materials are ready if you submit them we could do the review on the same day in the admissions office 
check it, send you feedback if there's anything. Um, if you want to meet with us to discuss your application, we can do that. And it's it usually doesn't take more than two to three days. And then when we move it to the um, committee in the education department, we also say that it will take two to four weeks, but based on my experience, it's usually very quick. It's, it's sometimes less than two weeks. You just need to have um, to schedule the interview, and that depends on how many students we have and also your schedule and your availability. After you finish the interview, uh, if the department decides to accept you, they will get back to you again in less than two weeks. And uh, the beginning of the programs, um, and that's, thank you for this question because I remember something now. Uh, international students usually, they apply for spring and fall um, due to the residency um, status of the international students, the visa requirements and the immigration requirements. We do not recommend that they come in summer or, spring or fall. So for um, fall, it is um, September 9th, correct, Catherine? the first week of the uh, month uh, of the September and also in uh, spring. It hasn't been decided yet, but it is mainly in beginning uh, end of January. Thank you. Um, okay, so uh, Kamla, I would encourage you to um, revisit the information in this session. I know you missed quite a lot because you join us late. Um, this uh, session recording will be posted on our Facebook page, so it will be accessible. You can watch it again, um, and we'll also be sharing. Uh, Rana has al already shared contact information, um, so you can get in touch with her and um, set up a meeting, perhaps with her, to discuss more about the uh, application process and what is the right fit for you in terms of the program that you want to do with the in relation to your background. Um, okay, so. Any more questions? Uh, yes, Kamal, we, we did uh, address the expenses part of the question uh, and uh, Dr. Snyder and Rana both addressed it. Any other questions uh, that we haven't answered yet? We have one more minute to go before we wrap things up. All right, um, uh, Rana, would you please also, uh, let me just make you um, the host. Uh, yeah. Can you please share your contact information again one sure. more time? Of course. With everyone? Yes. Okay, so here's my email, my phone numbers. And I will share also the weekly sessions so you guys can join us. Uh, we have virtual weekly sessions on Fridays and um, call them office hours. You can join us and ask any question virtually if you do not prefer email or a phone call. So one last question, I think somebody is asking, uh, um, are there any programs for school leadership? Uh, I think what Dr. Snyder said in the beginning was uh, with the Masters in Arts and Teaching, the MAT program, uh, there are there have been uh, students in the past who have uh, made it to leadership positions. Is that correct? Yes, and in New York State, you need to teach for a certain number of years before you can pursue a leadership position. So mm -hmm. after you've been teaching, teachers will then go back to school to pursue the certifications they need for what we call um, building level or district level leadership and, and get, those, get those additional certifications. But you have to start it as a teacher first. All right, I think we'll wrap up the session now. It's already five. Thank you everyone for joining. Um, any parting words, Dr. Snyder and Rana? Just thank you very much for inviting us. It was a pleasure sharing information about the US education, teacher education system and Clarkson. And, and I'd love to hear from folks if they're interested in, in careers in teaching. Yeah, thank you so much, everyone. And please feel free to email me, join the sessions. Uh, I will be more than happy to answer your questions. Thank you. If you can move on to the next slide, please.
All right, so you already have uh, both Catherine's and Rana's uh, contact information and links to join their virtual sessions. Uh, if you'd like to get connected with an advisor um, and work on your US uh, uh, university application, uh, please reach out. Uh, we have uh, free, we offer free advising services. The link at the bottom is to register on our website. Uh, so you can directly go on the website and register here, or if in case you have a question, one-time question that you want to ask, um, feel free to um, email us on our center emails for Samba, the Hor, and Karachi that I mentioned on the slide. Uh, next slide, please. As mentioned, this uh, re recording of this session is, will also be uploaded on our social media platforms. So follow us on our Facebook and Instagram and Twitter pages so that you can stay updated with the resources that we share or um, the, the recordings of uh, different sessions that we do throughout the throughout the year. Um, there are also recordings of sessions uh, available from previous sessions that we have done. Uh, so you can also benefit from those. Um, our, our two um, social media platforms are Education USA Pakistan and USEFB se separately. So please follow us on both these pages. Right. Thank you everyone for joining us. Um, I hope this uh, information session was um, helpful to you all. Um, please reach out to us and Rana and Catherine if you have any questions. Um, take care and have a good evening. Thank you everyone. Have a good evening.